All right, so what I want to do is I want to start it off with um, giving some people some context because some people may have walked in this room and not understood or understand the story that is Eddie Gallagher. So let's start off with the, uh, from the beginning of this specific deal. How did this, how did this come about? Sure, so uh, 2017, uh, I was in uh, SEAL Team 7 uh, Alpha Platoon and we deployed to Mosul, Iraq. I was the platoon chief. Um, during that deployment, it was, uh, it was a very good deployment, uh, one that everybody wishes for, but uh, there was definitely some drama that happened in the platoon. Some guys uh, just were not up for the task. Um, I, we continued the mission. Uh, and at the end of that deployment, uh, there was a lot of grumblings. Uh, and it's, that's pretty uh, normal within a platoon, you know, after six, seven months on deployment living together. But uh, these guys, it was only like three or four, uh, came back and continued to spread rumors uh, about me just because they didn't like me as a leader or a person, uh, which is fine. Um, but these rumors escalated um, to uh, war crimes. Um, that wasn't until about six, seven months after deployment uh, is when they reported it. Um, <clears throat> it was a eye-opening uh, thing for me because- Can you speak up, Eddie? Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <clears throat> Use my man voice. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it was an eye-opening thing for me um, because I had never been put in a situation like that before and, um, and the investigation started. And once uh, that started, I was pretty much shunned. Um, no one would talk to me, head shed. And uh, I, we, my wife and I and family just sort of rolled with the punches. Uh, we, we thought that somebody would see through these uh, ridiculous rumors and an adult would come to the table and be like, hey, let's really look into this, but that never happened. And once the investigation got turned over to NCIS is when it skyrocketed. Uh, they, an agent named Joe Warpinski um, decided to try and make a career out of this. And um, he uh, pretty much formed a prosecution before he even started investigating. So he just took all the information that he wanted uh, to prosecute me and uh, anything that was that came out that uh, prove my innocence or this didn't happen, they threw to the wayside. Uh, we didn't find this out until I was locked up. Uh, but um, <clears throat> around June 2018, uh, my house got raided by uh, about 25 to 30 NCIS agents. And uh, I think I believe a couple FBI agents were there as adult supervision. They uh, pulled my children out um, in their underwear uh, with uh, automatic weapons pointed at their face. Uh, my wife and I were not home at the time. And um, actually they had me in it, locked in an interrogation room. My wife was out at a business lunch with her, her friends. Um, and that's when we knew that it was, this had gotten out of control. Um, I moved my family to Florida. At that point I was like, I'm retiring. Um, I don't wanna be a part of this anymore. Um, they waited until I came back by myself to San Diego. I was gonna geo batch until uh, my retirement. And that's when they came after me. I was at a, uh, TBI clinic getting checked up for all of the injuries I had sustained over the 20 year career, which is a normal thing to do before you retire. Um, and they came in there about a week and a half and handcuffed me and threw me uh, in prison, military prison uh, with no explanation. I had asked a million questions, why am I going? No one had an answer. Um, they just said it's been signed off by the Admiral and you have to go. Um, I got locked up in prison. Um, and I was for sure thought I was gonna get out within three days. I was like, this is a mistake. Um, they held a uh, hearing in prison, uh, which is a, it's a formality they do with every prisoner. Um, and it determines whether you can get out, like if you're a threat uh, and they can let you out of prison before your trial. Um, that's when I knew the power of the government. Um, that was the first day that I saw exactly what they do. Uh, the, the prosecutors came into that uh, hearing and called me everything from uh, a wife beater, a drug abuser, a drug mule, a uh, fake Christian. I mean, they just spouted off all this stuff and uh, there was nothing, you cannot say anything. You just let them ramble on um, and pretty much they wouldn't let me out. Uh, they also used every qualification uh, from my job against me saying that I was a danger to society if I was let out uh, because I was a breacher, because I was a sniper, because I mean, every qualification they had. Um, that's when I knew I was like, okay, this is, this is going to be a long, hard road. Um, they locked me back in a cell and thank God my wife um, stood up 
and started fighting back, uh, started putting the truth out there. Uh, she started a organic Instagram campaign um, and started disputing everything that the Navy or the government was saying about me, um, as well as certain media outlets that the uh, Navy and military were leaking all the information to to create this narrative that I was um, some kind of psychopath, warmonger, uh, war criminal. Um, it was it was definitely an eye opening experience uh, as far as fake news. Um, I'd never really paid attention to the news before this. You know, I just did my job. I was happy to do it, um, and we definitely uh, got a first first class lesson in you know how that works. Um, so my wife continued to fight for me. I, I was locked up for nine months uh, before my trial. Um, during that time, um, there was a lot of things that happened, uh, but we kept on catching them, doing corrupt things, um, lying, and we would call them out in court. Uh, we would have the evidence and none of that mattered. The judge would just say, nope, keep going. Um, it, was, uh, it was a very hard, frustrating situation. Um, and it wasn't until uh, President Trump uh, tweeted to let me out of prison. Um, and I think that's a big misconception that uh, still goes on, that he had pardoned me or he had somehow you know, taken my side. All he did was said, let him out of prison so he can properly defend himself before trial. He was not saying I was guilty or not guilty. The unfortunate fact though of that was, you know, due to the, uh, our society during that time, you know, half the country hated his guts. Um, so therefore, half the country now hated my guts. Um, they, I mean, people that had no clue about the story then were just piling on like, yeah, this guy is evil um, because the president supported him. Um, but, you know, I'm grateful for what he did for me. I'm grateful that he did let me out so I could properly defend myself. Um, and because of that, I was able to um, actually meet with my lawyers. I was being denied legal visits while I was in prison, being denied medical, um, being denied all sorts of things that you would think service members would have the right to, even if, because I was in pretrial confinement, so I wasn't classified as a prisoner at the time, um, even though that's how they treat you in there. Uh, but, um, you know, we, uh, we fought and we got to trial and, um, you know, it was a, uh, it was still a hard fight, but we ended up, you know, going through trial and I was proven innocent of every charge except for one, which was taking the picture, uh, with a dead enemy corpse. Um, with, because the Navy had spent so much time and energy and a lot of money, uh, invested into putting me away for life and they lost. The uh, persecution didn't stop there. You know, I, after trial, <clears throat> they kept coming after me. Um, they tried to take away my retirement. Uh, they tried to bust me down to E1, which would have been like I would have never done my 20 years. Um, uh, we, the president then got involved again and said, let this man just retire with everything he's earned. He did not pardon me. Um, but then once the president called me and said I could retire with everything, I, with everything that I had earned, the Navy then came after me again and said, well, now we're going to take away your trident. Now we're going to do this to you. Um, so it was it was an ongoing fight the whole way until the until I got my retirement ID. Um, and, uh, you know, that's why, you know, afterwards there was this big narrative that, you know, half the country still believed that I was a war criminal, um, that I was pardoned by Trump. There was tons of misinformation out there, and that's why my wife and I decided to write this book. Um, I would have been one of the last people ever to write a book. Uh, you know, if this hadn't happened, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have written a book. But this story needed to be told. I needed to get the truth out there. Um, so I spent the last year just telling the whole story. I mean, there's a lot in there that people don't know. A lot that the media refused to uh, report. And then also, this is, the story is crazy. So it's. I mean, there's a lot of twists and turns that. I don't think the most imaginative, uh, you know, movie producers could make up, but the stuff happened, which is why I put the QR codes in there. Um, it has all the evidence they had against me, as you can listen to all the uh, NCIS videos, the whole trial audio, and I wanted to be as transparent as possible. So, you know, unlike what the media did, you know, I was like, here's everything. Um, so I hope you guys, you know, when you're reading the book and really go through that you can see it and i wrote it in such a way you know you can at the end of the book you can make your own decision you can be your own critical thinker so